G'day guys, Grundy here. Sorry it's been a little bit of a wait for my uh, third episode of Bodybuilding Stories. Uh, today I thought I'd talk about uh, one of the bodybuilding's greats, uh, Sean Ray, probably one of the greatest bodybuilders uh, not to win the Olympia. Probably should have won it on a few occasions. Uh, I never particularly knew Sean that well. Like I'd see him and I'd say hello. But Sean was uh, always reminded me of being very similar to Lee Labrada. Like he was extremely professional. Everything that he did was directed towards his goals and, you know, definitely wasn't a party. It definitely wasn't, um, you know, like some of the other guys out there doing some crazy things. He was very focused and he, he was such a great bodybuilder from uh, winning the Nationals, I think, in his early 20s or maybe even before his 20s, and uh, which was an amazing accomplishment. Then he had an amazing, consistent career, probably one of the most consistent bodybuilders that would come in condition every show and improve. And the, the, the most impressive thing to me was as a, as a bodybuilder, so many bodybuilders had weak body parts. And of course, you know, you've been training for, for 15 years or whatnot. You don't go and bring up a weak calves or a weak pair of arms in one year. But Sean, in the early part of his career, if, if there was any criticism of him, because, he was, because everyone just thought the world of him because he had such a great physique, was that his back was not up to par, perhaps, with the rest of his body. And he is the only bodybuilder to this day that I've ever seen that, within a year, brought his back up to the point that it actually became one of his strongest body parts, which, which always amazed me because you've been training for so many years, you, you know, body parts, if it's weak, it's weak, it's, it, it, it'll lag. And, and, you know, I've always been that impressed with Sean, like he's very scientific, he's very specific, he's very articulate. Well, you know, he sat down and designed a program for himself and brought his back up to the point where he, you know, do back double biceps and back, back, you know, rear lat spreads with Dorian Yates, Kevin Lavrone, Chris Cormier, and, 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 and would more than hold his own. So that was one thing that truly impressed me about him. You know, obviously his physique was, was flawless. And from talking to the other competitors, that they always compared Lee Labrada with him in the sense that when you stood on stage with Sean, you just, his confidence would diminish your confidence because he would just stand there. He wouldn't look at the other competitors. He would just look straight ahead his compulsories were hit perfectly. Uh, he was just pretty much near to being the perfect bodybuilder that you could get in the sense of unbelievable marketing for himself. He spoke so articulately. He, um, you know, had little battles of words with other people and, and it always drew attention to himself. And, and it was just a great example for the sport of, um, you know, just being a, a professional. He, um, he would come to the gym and you'd see him at Gold's Gym and it didn't appear that he had great friendships with a lot of guys because he was, which was smart because he distanced himself and, and focused on his own career. And that, that probably got him a few haters because people were just, you know, the man's career was just outstanding from the time that he started competing to the time that he retired. He, he was always placing like in the top two, the top three at the Olympia and winning other pro shows and like I said, always coming in in amazing shape. And he was a motivational factor for me when it came to interviews because his interviews were so good and so spot on and would give such great information. And I heard from another bodybuilder, I have no idea if it's true, but it made me actually, I've always interviewed myself driving along in the car asking questions, but I heard a story that he was uh, like sitting in a toilet stool, stool like where you go to the toilet, sitting in there and apparently having a tape recorder and interviewing himself to see how he sounded. I have no idea if that's true or not, but it definitely sounds like something he would do because he was such a professional in every sense of the word. So, yeah, it, it was just great uh, to, to be a part of that generation and to watch Sean come up because that was really the golden age of bodybuilding when there was camaraderie and, and whatnot. And Sean, don't get me wrong, got along with all, all the guys, but he was very much to the point of focusing on his own career, what was going to benefit him the best. And uh, that's something I, I've tried to instill into myself, which I probably, you know, took from him, that you really, whatever you do needs to be directed towards your goals. And uh, Sean did that, he, you know, the videos he shot, uh, bodybuilding, bodybuilding uh, 
what, what was that bodyboarding video you that was so cool? The, the one you did a lot of them, but uh, lifestyles of the fit and famous, and uh, I, I must have watched that like fifty times with my mates. And he was revolutionary in coming out with those type of things. Like he was the first one to be doing stuff like that. Always great at self promotion. Um, he was always great on the Battle of the Olympia tapes. You know, you just love his preparation and. It was just amazing to see his career from the time that he started to the time that he finished. He excelled and retired when he still had more years left in him. So you know that he was a smart man in the sense that he he got out totally on top. He wasn't one of the bodybuilders that hung around till he didn't have to because financially he was very set because of his smart investments and he was a, it was a marketing dream. So he got a lot of sponsorships. So uh, yeah, Sean was definitely someone that you know I, I wish I had had the opportunity to know better. But um, from everything that I've seen from him and heard from him, there was nothing but respect. And, and you know, if someone knew that Sean was doing a show, you know, they weren't happy about it because you knew Sean was going to bring his A game every single time. So uh, if you're a fan of Sean Ray's, he's everything you thought he was and more.